spring gardeners, summer gardeners, and pretty soon fall gardeners, but we'll say that we're in the spring mode, right? <laughs> I'm Lori Rosner, and tonight I will be your representative to help with the kickoff of the, does anybody know what year we're going into? What's our number of year that we have for Enfield's Thompsonville Community Garden Bed Team? What year are we going into? Six. Okay. What's in between? Seven. Woohoo! <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but soon to be eight, right? We're working our way. And a few more years, we'll be um, celebrating our 10th anniversary, right? How, how great is that? We are excited uh, this evening, as you can see, that we have um, lots to cover. You could probably tell by um, the information here. And we're excited to be able to um, have you come and um, be part of the community. This is a community garden. That is the theme. Uh, I see that there's um, some new, um, those that have been gardening for quite some time. I'm a newbie, so I will have my first bed this year. I'm a little nervous, but Trish tells me I shouldn't be nervous. So I um, am a newbie. Any, anybody else new? Okay, we have some new, okay, great. I'm not gonna be alone, and we also have some seasoned gardeners, and we also have our master gardener, so we can all help one another and um, continue our uh, community uh, together. And we started in 2008 with the town of Enfield with the University of Connecticut Master Gardener program. And we're really excited that we are continuing that program. And we have Trish here, the Master Gardener, with us again this year. So thank you very much, Trish. And part of that is a, a grant. The initial setup for this community garden was given to us by a grant from the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. And the um, Thompsonville Community Garden provides the garden plots, uh, provides the soil, provides uh, tools, provides seeds, uh, and those that um, sign up this evening. And as those um, plots go, I understand the plots are going very quickly. I think that's a really great sign. Or maybe we're just saying, we're tired of winter <laughs> and we want to get outside. I don't know about you. How many of you want to get outside? I want to get outside. I am done being inside the house uh, and uh, shoveling snow and trucking it. So it's great to be outside. We have um, 51 beds this year. So that um, is great news. And I know that they're going very fast. And I know some. Um, have beds that they like to um, have year after year. So um, we will also try to accommodate that. We are going to do first come, first serve, but we do want to accommodate those that have had beds. Uh, so because we are a community and um, you get to enjoy those each year, so definitely. So we'll work on that together. And we actually even have uh, this evening the, um, the layout of the beds so we can go through that. I'm going to go through, and uh, Trish is also going to help me, and those of that you may not know, Ginny. Ginny is our administrative liaison. She is the one that is the treasurer, so she is the one that we see for the money. And we also, uh, Ginny is the one for any administrative questions. For example, any questions that you may have regarding, uh, you know, Robert Frost said, uh, good fences make for good neighbors. So that helps us all to put together an outline of expectations. I don't know about you, but when I know what is expected of me, I feel a little bit better. I feel a little bit more comfortable because then I know what I can do and what I can't do and how things can be better for me, especially um, since I am a new gardener. I need to know what I can do and what I can't do because I don't know what, what I can or can't do because I'm new to even the word, um, uh, some of the words that Trish gave to me. So I will, um, I will try to learn those. Uh, and 
So uh, Jenny really is our liaison for any administrative um, for the beds, uh, for the, um, the plots, for um, administrative, for the forms, for each of the gardening years. So, and Trish, she is our master gardener who is going to be the one that has to do with any questions regarding the beauty, the growth, uh, the structure, anything that we have regarding the actual uh, gardening experience. And she's also going to uh, train us, help us, guide us. Uh, and also we want to make sure that we have Trish guide us because I don't want to bring in, I don't know those that are new, uh, I don't want to bring anything I'm, I'm not supposed to because this is based on a grant and we're still, you know, that grant money, we don't want to lose that grant money that we have. Uh, so we need to ensure that there's certain uh, rules or things that we abide by to make sure that it's organic or something like that. So um, I will learn and I'll probably have better words next time. <laughs> next season when I'm here, I'll, I'll probably know those words. <laughs> uh, how many of you already know those words? <laughs> Okay, good. We have some hands here. Uh, so, and you're going to give us some tips tonight too, right? So, you want to you want to get busy? We'll go through this together. And as we're going through this together, I uh, I think there's some pens. If you need some more, we have some more pens around here. At the very end, we're going to for those that have shown up this evening, we do have some raffle prizes tonight. So we will do those at the very end. And we also have a gift again. For those that sign up for a bed, we actually have a trowel, right? Trowel, thank you. Uh, and they have measurements, because I understand the measurements are um, important. Uh, so we have that for everyone uh, this evening. So, and we will be ready to sign you up uh, and uh, move you forward. So if we could, I'm going to go through this. Uh, if we could hold our questions at the end, if you could please write your questions down or circle. Try to be very thorough because we do have this information right now on www.thinkenfield.com. On the lower left-hand side of the web page where it says videos and it has a video of the actual um, what one of the beds looks like it's right above that and you can click on it and that document is here I also have extras for you because I know some of you are going to want to fill out this information and hand it in this evening there's extra copies for you to take with you so you have the information to go with you that sound good okay great so our educational classes uh, that Trish is going to bring together, I'm actually on uh, paragraph three, um, is going to be able to understand um, why raised bed gardens are preferred by gardeners, the advantages, the prep work that's involved, the most popular type, what type of seeds um, are the best type of seeds, what materials provided to you, and also how to plan the right crop for you because you know me being new, what am I gonna wanna do? I'm gonna wanna do what? Everything. everything. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna wanna do everything. So I can't do everything, right? right? Okay, so I can't do everything, but I can kinda eat what I love to eat. So actually, uh, when you go to um, near the, the end, it says, list what you would like to grow and eat. And Trish, the master gardener, will review it with you because we can only be so realistic, right? Well, unless, you know, unless, um, you know, we just take all the beds, right? <laughs> but what, can, what you can realistically grow in your bed um, to make sure that it really flourishes and um, is hardy. I got a good word there, right? Uh, uh, so we will go to that. And we also have a second sheet here which has um, garden educational sessions and what to expect on planting day. So Trish will go through that. Uh, the great news is we have um, sponsorship to be able to uh, not need anything to start the season. Is that like great news or what? So we are ready to go. Uh, we're ready to um, have our uh, planting day. Our planting day, which is in here, is going to be 10 to noon on Saturday, May 10th. 
So Saturday, May 10th, 10 to noon, we will all come back together along with several folks that are not able to make it. I understand we've got Girl Scout, we've got Loaves and Fishes, we've got the fire department has taken a bed, the police department, public works, yes. um, some of your, your, your contacts that you know, a couple of mine, a couple uh, geez, I'm, well, I think that um, I'm glad that you're here this evening. And those that haven't signed up, um, it's right on www.thinkenfield.com, and you can get that information. And Ginny's name is all over this document. So you have her telephone number, you have her email to be able to just go right ahead and uh, contact her. And then any gardening questions, we contact Trish. Trish. Great. Uh, so to get you started, um, we have some um, outlines. Um, we have tools in the shed, which I know seasons, or you're familiar with that. So we have tools um, and we have information and you'll give us tips on that, Trish. So why don't we go right to um, page three and what is our goal? Our goal is to create a sense of community, right? And there is more people part of our community than is here this evening. So our community, our community is even bigger than this evening, which is something that we'll get to enjoy and see throughout the season. And it really is about creating a place, a place for all of us to go to, a place for us to say, hey, look at that, or maybe my bed will go, Oh, look at that. <laughs> so uh, it's something where we can uh, really come together and to have a safe environment, a pleasant environment, and also a beautiful environment, an enclosed place that is locked. Um, we actually, for those that sign up, um, we actually even have uh, new locks and we have combinations for the community here um, to be able to um, enjoy. And uh, just remember, as you're coming in and as you're going, to toggle, OK? So we have the uh, locks that are toggle. And just spin them on the way in and way out. I know those that are seasoned probably know that, but us newbies don't know that uh, because we want to make sure that it's a safe environment. So we want to make sure that we spin it, because we all will know the combination and those that sign up after, OK? And it is also about um, respect. Again, it's like Robert Frost. What is that, that, that poem? Yeah. yeah, yeah, good fences make for good neighbors. And um, it's really for us to all understand. And uh, like I said before, I'm new. Um, I'm going to take as much guidance as you possibly can give me. I will definitely welcome it. Uh, so the information for the lease agreements for the beds, again, is at www.thinkenfield.com. And you can also pick up an application right at the town hall. And you can go to um, the, the assistant town manager on the second floor development services. Uh, and Kim Markwell will also have copies. So those that do not have access to the internet, you can also get it right at the town hall. So we're trying to make it very convenient. It is on a first come, first serve, as you can already see. This is very popular, and I think it's because we're all tired of winter and we want to get outside. Uh, so if there is a, a waiting list, um, we'll put you on the waiting list. And as soon as the bed comes available, that's fine. Um, if they're all filled, that's fine too. And it just shows that we have a really great community. And let's see here. Um, and again, Ginny is the individual um, for payment, and they're annual. So we're looking to have all payments by May 1st uh, for all the beds, so we're up and running, um, and we can um, start and in, in, in just start planting and have that, all that administrative stuff behind us. Um, however, um, if there's extenuating circumstances, something coming up, we're going to talk to Jenny. All right? And if you have any changes, this is really important. We really want to communicate with you. We want to let you know what's going on. If you have any information that changes, like your email address, because we really are going to, how many have email addresses here? 
Okay, so we all have email addresses. Did I see everybody's hand up? I don't think so. We have a Almost. phone, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have, we're not going to work on that. <laughs> uh, so really, it's really the email addresses. If something changes or your cell phone changes, it's really important that we stay together as a community because if we know what's going on together as a community, we all know when to show up, what's going on, and information changes. Um, again, I'm, I'm pointing at Jenny. <laughs> so we understand that um, it's May 1st, and it's important that um, payment is received because if payment is not received and we've got a waiting list, it's really not fair, okay? So we really need to have that. And if for those um, that uh, may be watching, um, you can always mail um, this information that's at the, on the website, thinkenfield.com, right to the town hall um, at, two, at um, town of Enfield, um, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, 06082, um, and um, attention to Courtney Hendrickson. I do live here, so I really do know the zip code. <laughs> uh, and let's see here. Oh, we need to be at least 18 years of age or older um, to have a bed. However, um, <laughs> However, um, I, think, um, I think I meet that requirement, <laughs> or at least my driver's license says I have. <laughs> and um, the rental fee is $25. We do have a lot of new things happening this year. We actually have security. We have security cameras. So there are security cameras up, um, and it is um, um, being videoed. Um, we also have more surveillance. We also um, have all, we are taking um, everything out of all the beds and we are starting fresh with fresh soil. We are um, also, I know that pesticides and things like that or, um, um, not pesticides, but um, fertilizer. See, I'm gonna get this right yet. Mm -hmm. Fertilizer. Uh, so. That's all going to be the, the whole mixture. And we're going to also have signs. So um, it's all about communication, right? So we're going to have signs of where uh, the soil, where trash goes, where everything goes. So we're going to have all the signs because I don't know about you, but I'm new. I'm not going to know where to go or, or to put anything. So I, I'm all for, for signage. So that would be very helpful. Um, we cannot subrent out our beds. So when we sign up for our beds, we own our beds for that period of time. And we're not here to grow anything commercially. We are here as a community uh, to eat our own food and to enjoy and celebrate that. And we are also going to be taught how to be bed friendly and uh, for weeds. And I understand we're not supposed to pull weeds. I was like, that was like a no-no I just learned, that you're supposed to cut the weeds. So Trish will um, tell us how to do that kind of stuff because I'm going to definitely need to understand that. Uh, let's see. Oh, and if I or any one of us neglect our garden and we just uh, somehow just go away and go and forget that we have a garden bed um, and that we have lots of overgrown and we have just forgotten it. Um, we're going to, um, you get to a red status, we're going to give your bed to someone else that is on the waiting list, okay? So, but why would we forget our beds that we uh, take care of? You're giving us water, right? Yes. All right, so we're getting water, right? Yeah. All right, and we'll get the tools to take care of it, right? Yes. And how often should we come? <laughs> I'm already putting her to work. I would like to see you there at least twice a week. Twice a week. At least in the beginning until we get to know what the climate is going to be this summer. At least twice a week. And we'll be going over all that during planting day. Okay, so I should come twice a week. And what am I doing when I come twice a week? You are <laughs> inspecting your bed. You're looking to see if things are growing. You're looking to see what's growing. Are the weeds overtaking it? You're looking to see whether you need to harvest, whether you need to water. 
um, and you're you know checking out how your neighbors are doing to make sure everything is is going well and there are other things in the garden that need attention and we'll go over that on planting day there's perennial beds um, that will be begging for attention and uh, there'll be herb beds there'll be strawberry beds um, so that there are other things besides your little plot um, that that will be needing attention so okay thank you thank you um, so I'll promise I won't go on red status because I don't want to lose my bed. All right. Uh, I can water. I do watering well. <gasps> um, we're not able to build any structures, so we're not looking to build any structures. But I do understand that we can go up a little bit. I understand that we could go up um, for, like, tomatoes or things like that. Yes, we do typically use tomato stakes and cages for the, for the tomatoes and also for beans. If you're growing beans or peas, they need to be raised up because they're a vining crop. Um, and in the past several years, we've had a lot of success with the cucumbers using the double-stacked tomato cages to keep them upright. It prevents them from sprawling. It helps prevent disease, and it makes it much easier to harvest. So we'll go over that again on planting day if, if cucumber is something that you would like to, to plant. Can I plant a tree? No, you can't plant a tree. At your house, you can plant a tree. I can plant a tree at my house. Um, are you letting people plant corn? Because sometimes that shades out the garden. Like we discourage the uh, planting of corn. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yep. No corn or tobacco. That's <laughs> next to the tree in your yard. <laughs> OK, so that leads us right into no tall plants or trestles. Um, but we are allowed to have some of the tomatoes and some of the cucumbers. So, you, But you're going to yes. educate on telling us right, all that information and specifics. Yes. OK. All right, so I'm not going to bring any of that tall stuff from home or anything. OK. Uh, no power or gas operated equipment. Um, but we can use the equipment that's in the, uh, the, shed. the shed. OK, so we are able to, whatever is in the shed, we, this is a community, and we can use that. Yes. OK, great. OK, this is our time where we are looking to have us there at least two times a week. OK. And it's important that um, your beds and the community garden is, you know, really your, your discretion. This is at your own risk. So I will make sure that I understand and um, those around us that may be new or seasoned um, to know how to operate whatever of the tools or equipment that is provided to us uh, safely. Uh, and that if you do bring any guest, the same thing applies to them um, to ensure a safe environment. So it's a matter of keeping our spaces clean and, 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 and um, beautiful as we all would expect them to be. And any unsupervised children um, under the age of 14 um, are really not allowed in the garden area. So um, we're also um, no dogs or pets. However, if it is a service dog, I mean that we we definitely understand that, okay. And after sunset, um, there is no gardening. Um, I don't know about you, but I can't see my garden. I need to go home. <laughs> um, but um, if there is light, um, we do get to enjoy our garden. And we are, in order for us to maintain our status for the grant, because we do not want to lose the grant and the status and the monies to that. Um, that we are not to use, bring in any chemicals. I see you shaking your head that you're already familiar with this. This is great. Um, uh, insecticides or anything that um, Trish has. Um, um, Trish has everything for us, so we really should be um, pretty much all set. And if you do bring in um, pesticides or anything like that, um, please don't do that. It's going to compromise uh, the beds, and um, we want you to stay part of the community. And we get water. You tell us we have water, right? Yes. And we have hoses, and we share those hoses. Is that right? We share those going back and forth. All right. There is no hoses right now. There is no hoses? I understand that we will have hoses. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, I asked that question because I'm like, how am I supposed to water my bed? And they um, have assured me that everything's going to be up and running. We're going to have all of our soil, especially um, the gardens right away that are signing up. Those are going to take priority. Have you bought new houses? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is. They will be there. On and so the question, the question was, are we buying new houses? Yes. We are starting fresh, new, all over. We've got the security cameras. We've got. Um, 
Um, Trish is actually bringing um, more programs in, so this is going to be a really exciting growing season. Really excited. And we are to conserve water, right? So we do want to share our water. Um, and oh, if we do have an emergency, you'll see on here that we actually added emergency number. So this is really your document to take with you and to have throughout the entire growing season because I'm sure after we see each other today, we're going to probably see each other in the garden, right? So for us to all come back together in one location again, um, you may have more questions. So please take this with you. We have an extra one in addition to what you'll sign up for this evening. We'll also have one of these in the shed all the time. So if we say, oh, I can't remember that, we will make sure that there's one copy there all the time. If we have an emergency water issue or we have an emergency issue for 911 or if we just have general police questions, we also put the, the general number in there too. So we all have the information ready for us. Uh, trash, um, there's also going to be signage for trash. And um, whatever comes in, we take back out with us, um, except the plants that we want to grow, except um, we can harvest what um, they produce for us. Restrooms are not provided. Um, however, um, it is something that's an open uh, community, so um, you may want to drink as much water. <laughs> Give it to your drink, feed the plants with um, as much water, but um, there are no restrooms. And smoking is not, pr not um, allowed. Um, and tobacco can carry, just so you know, tobacco can carry plant disease, so um, no smoking in that area. And um, all rules apply to your family because we are an extension of the community, right? We, are, we have our friends, we have family, so we are an extension of the community, and all rules applies to your guest. And we talked about the gate right we know what to do with the gate as we're leaving and as we're coming and um, to keep the combination locked to yourselves this is our um, private community um, and we want to keep it safe and we do not want any vandalism or anything like that so please keep that confidential These are our policies and our rules and procedures. This is something for us to have a good community and a respectful community because when you respect one another, you have a lot of fun because we know what to expect. I feel better knowing I'm coming in. I'm new, right? I'm going to want to know um, what the community is expecting of me. And uh, when I have that successful tomato plant, I will yell and I'll show it to all of you. <laughs> or if it's not successful, I'll probably yell and cry instead. Uh, there are no refunds um, for the fees uh, once they are, and um, we really want you to commit to the community here. Trish, what have I missed? What other items would you like to talk about? You did indicate you were going to um, give us a couple of ideas of what to expect on planting day. Yes, if, if you go back to page two, um, what I've given you is a, a rough draft of kind of what I'd like to plan for the season. The top section um, talks about garden education section, sessions. Um, these are common topics that come up during the season and I think if you're informed about it, you'll be less, uh, have less of a problem. Um, I, I like to practice what's called best organic practices. They're basic practices that help ensure that the soil stays fertile, um, that it doesn't invite pests and um, disease. And if you follow these, you, you usually have a really good season. Um, as I said, this is our seventh season. And uh, in the beginning season, uh, when there was a terrible problem with tomato blight in 2009, uh, we did not have it at Thompsonville, and that is attributed to the soil and the organic practices. And that, I was all around the state that year, and everybody had it, but we did not. So we were very proud of that, and that wow. is because of the soil, and that is what I want to continue. So the soil is number one, um, and, and I will drill that in over and over, is to protect the soil fertility. Um, so I'll go over what that means and how we preserve it. I'll talk about good bug, bad bug. Um, insects are a part of our life. They're an essential part of life, and, uh, and you have to understand that we need to live with them. And there are good bugs and there are bad bugs, and we'll go over which one is which and what you should do if you see one. 
Uh, we'll talk about composting, another important aspect of soil fertility, and how we do it at the garden and why we should do it. Um, I'll talk about weeds. Oftentimes, right after planting day, you're in there, you're scruffing up the soil, you come back two days later and there's all these little seedlings that you didn't plant. Well, that's just a natural follow through whenever you lift the soil and move it from a stationary place, you're now allowing weed seeds that have been underneath to reach the sun and get moisture and they germinate. So I'll talk about what a seed looks like and how often you should be um, checking for them. We'll talk about pests. Again, it goes back to good bug, bad bug. We'll talk about disease. Disease is very common in the garden when it comes to be July and August when we have those warm, moist, humid days and there's moisture sitting on the leaves all day long and you come in at 6 a.m. and you water your bed from up high and you flood it and then you walk away, you are inviting pests and disease. It's like putting out the, 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 the sirens, come eat me, I'm weak now. And pests come to weak plants. They do not come to healthy plants. So we are going to do our best not to see any pests this, this uh, season. Um, as we said earlier, we are going to be um, renewing the soil. The soil is uh, seven years old now. Um, it's had some issues and we wanna take care of that. We wanna prevent that from reoccurring. So we'll be starting with most of the beds having fresh soil. And to that, that means you don't need pesticides. You don't need fertilizer. It is very rich soil. You're putting in healthy plants. You're taking care of them. There shouldn't be a problem. If there is, I wanna know about it. Um, We'll also be talking about the perennial beds. I did mention that earlier. At both um, the east and the west ends, there are perennial beds. And so those are plants that were put in several years ago. They really don't need a lot of attention because they're very mature right now, but they will need attention in the beginning, weeding, just like anybody's lawn. Um, you need to go through and clean them up, cut off the dead wood um, and water so that when you're there watering your bed, take a walk down and take a look and see how the perennials look. They're in the sun all day long. If you had some water that day, they should get some water too. Um, so I'll be looking for volunteers that want to help out taking care of the perennial beds. We'll talk about what the plants are, why we put them there. Um, um, one of my passions is extending the harvest. What that means is that you are planning to feed yourself through the cold months from your garden bed. Um, gardening doesn't end in September. It continues. It's actually a lot easier in September because there are no pests around and um, the disease, because of the cooler temperatures, isn't able to thrive. And so you have very little maintenance. What you're doing, and I'm just going to give this out to you now, is you've got to think um, about your planning. Um, in order to leave room for uh, fall harvesting and winter harvesting, you've got to save some room. So um, around July, I'm going to be reminding you, this is the time to think, do you want to do a fall bed? If you want to do a fall bed, you might have to think about taking out some of your spring planted crops and say, okay, no more spinach, no more carrots, no more radishes. I'm going to take those out and put in fresh seeds to get them ready and we'll talk about how to cover the bed and protect it during the cold weather. Um, I'll be doing garden walkthroughs uh, just to check to see how your beds are looking. Again, it's very important. Um, disease and pests, they travel in the garden. If you're not taking care of your garden, that might not seem that's important to you, but it's affecting your neighbor. And, and we don't really want to offend neighbors here. We want to all work together and really focus on community this year. As I understand it, we're going through those walkthrough very regularly. Every we'll week or two, We'll probably be there more yes. than you are. Yes, yeah, more, yeah, maybe, <laughs> yep. Um, and the special care of tomatoes and squash, they tend to be the favorites. They are the warm season plants. Everybody wants to plant them, and thus, if you plant them every year, you have a problem. Um, and so, because we're not, we don't have a huge space that you can rotate the plants around, we tend to have problems with the tomatoes and the squash. But that will be alleviated this year because we'll have new soil, okay? So that won't be a problem this year, but I want to make you aware, again, the watering practices are crucial. Um, and I, I, will be, I will be around and talking about that very often. Um, as far as planting day, uh, so planting day is May 10th from 10 to 12. Um, regardless of the weather, unless it's snow, I will be there and I expect you will be too. So dress for the weather, um, dress to get dirty. Comfortable clothes, 
You're going to be on your knees. You're gonna, your hands will get dirty. Bring some gloves if you have them. We have some in the shed. You'll be getting new trowels. You'll be all set. Um, and it does get wet that day because people tend to water and drag the hose everywhere, so don't wear your best shoes. Um, so on planting day, we'll, we'll go over the beds. Um, we'll go over the perennial and the herb beds, what's community, what's yours, um, what's in the shed, how to take care of it, uh, the compost bins, very important part of, of the community garden. Um, the watering hoses, how to use them, how to properly store them. Um, how to water without dragging the hose over your neighbor's bed and hurting their plants. Uh, again, this is community. I really want to focus on keeping that a strong point. Uh, we will talk about proper planting and proper watering. These are the key notes of organic practices. Um, how to have a su successful garden experience and enrich your life with plants. That's my passion. I want everybody to learn just a little bit how to grow something and, and feel that connection to the earth. Um, as you know, climate change is here to stay. We have no idea what the garden season will bring us. Um, it's up to us to take care of this little corner of Enfield and keep it a community garden that we are proud of. Um, we will talk about the ideal garden layout. What I did last night, um, I played around with a couple of different options. This is key for people who are just starting garden beds. You don't know how to plan. I gave you some options on what you can plant and how. And if you notice that, I've left a lot of space around it. Um, the most common gardening um, problem on planting day is to take 10 plants and put them all close together in your bed because they all look small. Well, that fertile soil and the rain and the sun makes everything grow tremendously. And if everything is all clumped together, you've now invited disease. So um, uh, I'm going to pass this around. There's a front and a back. Um, I have included um, tomatoes. I have included um, cool season as well as um, warm season plants. I have even shown you how to put in companion planting, which is another passion of mine, to include herbs and flowers. Um, they bring in beneficial insects, and they help confuse the pests because of the wonderful smells they go to somebody else's bed who doesn't have them. Um, so I also have included on the back, um, if you wanted to put in peas, if you wanted to put in lettuce in rows, um, and um, as a tribute to Jamie, I put in a square foot gardening. So um, it's very successful square foot gardening. If you're a new gardener, um, it's a very easy way to go. It's very methodical, and it keeps everything in its place, and it makes it very easy to maintain. So I'm going to pass it around, and certainly if you have any questions about what you would like to do, how would you format your garden if you wanted to do the fall gardening, I will be glad to go over that with you. Is this online, too? No. Okay. No. We can put it online. We can definitely sure. put that on. Yeah, okay. if I could take that with me sure. tonight, we can put it on yep. uh, the yep. um, thinkenfield.com right next to the, um, the, other the, one, yeah. the other one. Yeah, okay. yeah right. definitely. Um, and you'll go over that. So absolutely. if I'm not here tonight, yes. we can this still is part of email day. you. This is part of planting yes, day. Yes, this is part of okay. planting day. So I do encourage you, if you can't come planting day, to let me know. I'll be glad to work with you um, and, and come to the garden. Um, I, I am going to warn you that my presence is not as frequent as it has been in the past because I have um, a very rich life working for two organic farms. And so I work six days a week. So um, I will try to dedicate a day and a time where I will be there every week or every two weeks, and we'll have that up on the website so you know, so that I can meet you there. We can go over problems, issues, whatever you would like to do. Um, so going on about planting day, just a couple more things. We'll talk about what to plant now and what to plant later. Um, this year, planting day is earlier. So May 10th is typically a little bit early for planting warm season plants. So on May 10th, we will be planting cool season crops. So those would entail lettuce and radish and beets and onions, things that can be out in the changing, moderating temperature. Plants that really can't go out then are cucumbers, uh, beans, squashes. Uh, tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, those all need warm soil temperature, not the air temperature. So on a day like today, you might think, okay, I can put my tomatoes in. Well, what do you think is coming Wednesday night? Snow. So 
there is a chance no. that we might get snow at the end. <laughs> at the end of this rain, yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, and a frost. So this is climate change. You have to anticipate ups and downs, okay? Um, there are ways to get around that, and we'll go over that planting day. But planting day, we won't be putting in tomatoes or I won't encourage you. If you decide to put okay. them in, it will be your responsibility okay. to watch the weather and cover them if there's a frost coming, okay? okay. Um, but I will teach you how to plant them when it gets to be the time to plant them, okay? Okay, so we'll put online um, at thinkenfield.com when you're gonna be there for the teaching. I yes. know you're gonna come and, and yes. visit, yes. but when there's something formal at teaching, we'll put that out Absolutely. there. Is yes. that helpful? So you don't have the dates of these sessions? I don't. It's really going to be according to, I like to time it with what's going on in the garden. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I think that, okay, because of the crazy weather, we're going to have an onslaught of problems, I want to get to you before we get the problems, not after. So um, a lot of these things really depend on, like we're not going to talk about extending the harvest in May. We don't really need to get into that until July. Um, identifying weeds, pests, and disease, that's going to be hard if there's none there, right? Um, good bug, bad bug. I really like to show you what those bugs are, so we kind of have to wait until at least mid-June to July before they start showing up and how to look for them on your plants. Um, but the crucial things like best organic practices, soil fertility, um, special care tomatoes and squash, we're going to go over those early. So you are, I want you ready before the time actually comes that you need this information. So you're, you're, you're doing this so it's the right timing for us. Exactly. So instead of getting us ahead or behind. Right, based on the weather. Get us, uh, based on the weather. Yes. And then I also know that Ginny, myself, um, and Courtney um, will also be there. So um, enjoying um, our beds and um, being part of that community too. Um, Keith, question I get every year, what should I plant? And my response is, what do you want to eat? Yeah. Okay, you're not planting for me, you're not planting for Courtney, you're not planting for Jenny, you're planting for you. You will be working this bed, you will be eating from it. So it needs to be a positive experience, especially if this is your first time. I want you to be happy eating your own produce. Um, so we'll go over that and we'll talk about what can and can't go in the bed as far as size and space. Um, Again, we'll talk about the perennial beds, um, and I think that is it. Okay. Let's go to, um, let's look at the, uh, I have oh, I sure. Have a um, quite often the emails about things that are going on with the garden come like two or three days before the, the, you know, like the meeting and stuff. I'd like to request a little bit further advance. You know, it just sometimes you just can't plan that quickly. A lot of times last year they came like two days before. And, you know, so if we could, I, I know that sometimes you can't because you're going to be mm -hmm. checking the, the state of the garden. But so the question, the question that we have is can we get emails on, you know, probably uh, a week in advance minimum? That would be great, yeah. Okay, so. I've lost, you know, if we can't, we can't, but. Okay. Sorry. So we will add that to the website and um, get ahead of that. Great. All right? So we'll get ahead of that. And as you see, we're really looking to increase communication. I think tonight is a really an example of that. And, uh, and you, you um, when you fill out the information right here on the rental agreement, you'll see that we have all the information because more information like your emails that we have, we're able to put that out there and give you um, ample notice. Because I know that I would certainly want to know a week ahead of time because I really want to be there when you're going to be there. Uh, so as soon as possible, that would be that would be great. Is that good? Yeah, that's great. Okay, wonderful. That was a really great comment. What happens if we don't have emails? Um, phone numbers. Do we have phone numbers, right? So we have a community here. And right you're, you're administratively, we'll make sure that when you put on the phone form, if there's no email on here, give us your number. So whether it's your cell, the number that you are totally committed to, and if you want to text, note that you would want to text. Tell us how you want to communicate. What's the best way for you? Because if we know, we could say, okay, you want to text. 
you know, we do have, um, we have 51 beds. We've got a community here. So we can do the mass email, we can text, and we can call. Because I know that these are going to be formal times um, that we're gathering and educational opportunities. And the rest, I'll see you in the garden, right? Okay, does that work? Uh, so uh, if you go to the rental agreement, if you could please print very clearly uh, because that will help us to make sure that we have everything correct. Some emails are longer, some emails are shorter. Yes. Also, if you're interested in extending the winter harvest, which is at no additional fee, could you please check that box if you're interested, okay? And if you are interested in volunteering and helping with the loaves and fishes beds, we actually have two beds for them. So we're looking for any volunteers that may want to help with those beds. Um, we would like to formally know who those volunteers are. And if you could please let Ginny know, um, and if you could commit to the season and help um, others. Also, if you'd like to sponsor a bed for somebody, an individual or a family in need, please indicate that. Uh, and if there's any um, comment that you would like to make, we would uh, welcome that. So the checks are made payable or cash um, to the Town of Enfield Community Garden Plot. And we've got our treasurer right here, or it can be mailed directly to the town, noting that it is for the community garden, OK? There's also a waiver of liability. This is something where you have volunteered that this is a community that you are volunteering. You are um, um, using the equipment. You understand how to use the equipment. And that you're also OK with having your bed photographed. So we've got some um, plants. We've got some flowers. Um, we want to be able to share what's going on in our community. Uh, so we may have um, things that we'd like to post, and we'd love to take um, pictures. And who knows, you know, we may want to take some pictures of us in the community together. And that you understand and operate how to um, use the, the tools, and that it is the property of the town. So don't forget, because sometimes we just have them in a pocket and we walk out. I'm sorry if I do that. I'll definitely come back, and I'll I'll spin it. I'll, I'll be a I'll, I'll be a good neighbor. I, I promise. Uh, and I, I think we covered a lot. And I'm really excited about the growing season. I know we have. Um, a high demand, which is which is great already, and do not say there's going to be snow, Trish. Uh, we we want we want um, we do need rain though. So rain is our friend, right? Uh, and sun is also our friend. And bring May flowers. And let's go right into Q and A. Oh, I'm sorry. I just if have I may. one thing that I would like to add on your uh, rental agreement. Um, I uh, several people have asked about returning to their same bed. Um, and so I just want to address that issue. Uh, we will take it on a case-by-case -case basis. And if you have perennials, something that grows every year without replanting, if you had strawberries in your bed or if you had perennial herbs in your bed, which some people had, some people even had asparagus, um, please write that on your agreement so we know what is in the bed that you would like to contain uh, to continue using um, and the bed number and as i said we'll go over on a case-by-case -case basis we're still working on assigning beds right now so we want to know where are the beds that have the perennials in them oh and i think that's also really good to know that because as we are putting in um, new soil exactly we yeah, want to know um, what to disrupt, what not to disrupt, and to, it all goes back to um, communicating and um, seeing each other out there and getting the word out. So, Q&A. Yes. I have a question. Um, Actually, uh, tomorrow, uh, on Wednesday morning, uh, you're familiar with the Transit Center? Mm -hmm. um, that is something that there is going to be an event there um, for the reinvigoration uh, process of having a Transit Center there. So it really is about 
um, having a space where it's a community. It's a walkable space. It is something where you can uh, ride your bicycles, outdoor space. You've got a beautiful freshwater pond right there. Uh, where is got, it? I don't know what that is. The freshwater pond um, right in the center, um, right behind the um, main area of Thompsonville. Um, there actually was skating. Yeah, there was actually skating this year on the pond. Is that like across from the garden? Um, yeah, yeah. Yep, you've got the beautiful dam there. Uh, that is gorgeous. That reminds me of, um, you know, that's definitely community. Uh, it's beautiful. I think what Janice is asking is um, when they decide that they're going to do a train station, are they going to blacktop the garden? No. Oh, no. Actually, the great thing about um, Thompsonville is it's already, I understand, a 60% rating as a walkable space. And that right there is amazing because some of the spaces that you would compare to other towns, some of them are at 6%. So Thompsonville is already at a very successful rate of a 60% walkable rate, so that we want to increase, not decrease. And we actually have done a study, and I know that this study was recently performed by um, all of your um, apartment um, uh, families right there at Bigelow Commons and other people in Thompsonville. And the, what we heard back was, we want to have open space. We want to have the park there. We want to have planting day. We want to have the gardens. We want to have a place where we can bike. We want a place that's safe for walking. Like, you know how they have those walkable spaces where there's actual s walks and sidewalks where there's lines? that those are designated and that they're safe and there's signs of where to go uh, and also um, to be able to have people live above um, the shops. So it really is about an effort to have it a space that is an outdoor experience um, and space and enhance the beauty of even uh, the park area by maybe even now, don't quote me on this or anything, okay? <laughs> but, you know, there's Lego in town, right? Why not have a nice area where maybe Lego is there and the children can come and play in that corner? I understand there may be some fishing derbies coming up, um, a kayaking. Also, we have the uh, riverfront recapture going on where you actually know where the boat launch is. That right there, they are looking to um, actually enhance that. So it's all about reinvesting in the community. And these are, as I understand it, um, our grants and initiatives that, and I can tell you, Courtney um, here, who has written this letter to you, she does apologize for not being here tonight. She's totally, as you can tell, she's totally committed to this for bringing us here tonight. Uh, but they are committed to reinvigoration and the transit center is a key part of that success. Um, but this is all done in stages, but it is something that's looked upon in the next three years. Well, the reason why I, mean, the reason why I asked is because I, I've been in Edmond for a long time, and last year I got together with a whole bunch of people in a community garden, and um, they did blacktop and more. The transit center blacktop is actually going in the opposite direction of the garden. Um, I'm the manager of the Big Little Commons. Um, town has been discussing with my company about the possibility of expanding into Big Little Commons and taking a portion of the uh, parking lot. It, and the, the transit center would also expand in the opposite direction towards the river, gotcha. as opposed to into Thompsonville, it going in the other direction in order to relieve some of the, the stress of parking, yeah. but also maintain what's already here. So. That's great. Well, and our community has gotten bigger, so it's something that we will um, definitely, um, we are, I mean, we're only a few years away from our 10th anniversary, so uh, we'll, be, we'll be here celebrating that together. And I won't, I'll have a green thumb and I won't be new. <laughs> you know what I mean? uh, I'll be two thumbs, I'll be one thumb, two thumbs, yes.
sorry for arriving late, but I missed the introduction to who you are and also where's the website. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I'm Lori Rosner. I'm representing Courtney Hendrickson tonight uh, to uh, facilitate this evening, and I'm also a future bed owner <laughs> and, and part of the community here. And uh, Ginny, she is the administrator, the liaison for the town for anything to do with the treasurer and anything to do for signing up for the beds. So all administrative. And then we have Trish, our master gardener from UConn program, um, and um, making sure we don't lose our grant specialist, uh, who is going to be able to help us um, have a very successful growing experience community and being able to make sure that we are um, get to um, eat plentiful um, and enjoy the community here with um, all of our garden needs. And which website are we? Oh. We had a garden website before, but did we still have that? It's not like a blog. Actually, what we're going to do at this at this stage, and um, this is kind of like a new process, so we want to encourage any feedback as we are going throughout this season. Right now, we want to make sure that we have your email address, your cell phone. If it does text, please let us know, and uh, and your con your your immediate contact information, and that we will communicate whenever there are um, Trish is coming out, what's going on, and we will definitely um, invite. Um, if there's somebody that understands uh, social media and wants to um, um, help with um, increased communication, if you'd like to volunteer, if you could please see me after, um, we will definitely be committed to communicating because it really is about communicating the, commu the, the community here and, and knowing one another. And I think that that's important too. Well, I heard earlier that you mentioned something up on the web. Oh, right now at www.thinkenfield.com. That is the business website for the town for economic growth um, and for um, uh, developmental services. That is right now this document that we just went over that has the waiver of liability. Okay. It has the rental agreement and the pages of what to know and understand as being a gardener and also the educational tips that uh, Trish has promised to walk us through and also an official welcome letter for those that are coming into the community for the bed rental. That right now is already on the website and uh, the document that we are just handing around that Trish made up for us to understand how we'd like to have our growing season, we'll scan that and we'll put that up on that website. When you land on the page, it's on the left-hand corner, right where the videos are. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great question. Are we ready for a growing season? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah? We're ready for some sun? Yeah. More questions. Yeah, yeah. One, one more question. Um, sure. Who's going to be, uh, or is it going to happen with the weed whacking and the grass trimming and the general upkeep of Well, I understand that um, Publix Works is also going to be um, helping us right now. Um, we don't have everything official for that, but we do understand that there are some um, <coughs> items that we may need some help with. So if you um, would like to come up after as we're signing up and give us some information, we are looking for volunteers because we do have a couple of things that we um, do need help with because what does a community do? We help one another, right? So we're definitely, um, I'm new, so any information you can provide to, to myself, we can um, coordinate. Again, it's like volunteering for loaves and fishes. Officially let us know if there's somebody that's gonna help us with communication. Officially let us know because what we wanna do is we want to assign and say, I'm committed to that. I'm going to be there for you because that way we know what the expectations are and we help one another throughout the entire season. Does okay. that make sense? Yes. But um, the reason why I'm asking is because when I, when I was helping out, um, there was a lawnmower, there was a weed whacker, and there is no more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, let's check that out. Let's talk about that. Can we talk about that after? Yeah, after. Okay. Yep. We will talk about that. Good. 
Any other questions? Wow, we covered a lot of ground. We covered a lot of information. Thank yes. You oh, you're quite welcome. Enjoy the strawberries. It, we're, we're, we want summer. As I understand it, there's not been a bathroom over there. Oh, there, there has been. Okay. Well, you know what? That's another great question. So I can go back and I can explore that one too. Okay. And lawn mowing. Okay. Any other welcome feedback? So I'll learn along with you. So are we ready to? Oh, yes. Go for it. Okay, we're, we're, we, I, I think that's been addressed and we can talk about that after too because I think the locks and everything over this past weekend has a whole different dumb way that we're doing it. So that's another great question. So the question was about the locks. So we, we got on top of that over the weekend. Mm -hmm. It was a nice weekend. We had some sun. So planting day is May 10th. Yes. yes. So should we assume that we're not going to be over there at all until planting day? Or do you need assistance when the beds are being changed? Or when, you know, will we find out the lock combination that day? And what, do you, what are you thinking? Actually, what we're going to do is we want to get everything prepped for you. So we're working really hard. So when we come to planting day, everything is pretty much done for you. Okay, so just come on the 10th. Just come on the 10th. Okay. That makes it really easy. Um, and it gives us a little bit of time to make sure that those beds are all prepped and ready for you, especially since we um, have so many um, uh, popular beds here. We want to make sure that um, they're all ready to go for you. That's why it's important to put on this form, if you do have an existing bed and we're going to disrupt something, to please let Trish know ahead of time. Okay, and also um, those that talked about um, Thompsonville reinvigoration, if there's anybody here that would like to be part of that process or volunteer for future committees, please let me know that too. Uh, we are here as a complete community. Uh, this is something for all of Enfield. I've lived in Enfield myself forever. Uh, so I'm really excited about having and being part of this um, this community. So I thank you very much for embracing me <laughs> and helping me. You, you, you said that um, you're going to prep all the beds for everybody. Um, how is that going to happen? Right now there's at least three beds that are kind of taken apart and need mm -hmm. more soil in and so on and so forth. Um, there's other beds that <clears throat> need some smoothing out and there are some beds that need tender loving care. Mm -hmm. um, so we have identified those beds and we are going to work on the beds that are already um, with the rental agreement said I'm, I definitely want a bed. We're going to make sure those are all ready for planting day first. And any other beds that are not rental, um, we're not concentrating on those to begin with. We want them ready for you. You've paid your money. You have committed to this community. We want to commit to you. Now, this is only my second year, and I had a disaster last year, but um, I'm determined. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I wanted to ask, last year, when, because planting day, we're not going to be able to plant like several different kinds of tomatoes, cucumbers, et cetera. Last year, on planting day, they had, and the day after, they had some plants that were, were complementary that were provided. So. I don't know what the plan is for this year since we can't, last year they had tomato plants, et cetera, and since it's going to be too early to plant tomato plants. A, are there going to be plants at all this year, or should we buy all of our own plants ahead of time? We're going to do a combination of both. So on the rental agreement, you see where it says, please write down what you want to grow. That gives me an idea. Do we need 500 tomato plants? I'm not going to buy 500, I promise you. Um, so please let me know what you want to grow. If you want us to help you with the plants, we will help you. There will be a limit because we, in past years, we have provided plants. People have put in too many plants, and they've ruined their beds. 
I don't want that to happen anymore. So there will be a limit, and I will decide that limit once I find out what people want to plant. So it's, up, it's in your hands as far as what you get right now. You need to tell me what you want to grow, then I'll go over it with you so that there's room for other things. If you want to plant later in the season to allow seeds to come in and grow, Okay. So if it, on May 1st, when we, or it's May 10th when we go, yes. we go and we can plant what? Beans? Or would you say we can plant Not beans yet. Again, Not beans are, are warm season. So it's going to be radishes right. and onions and carrots okay. and, and peas um, and, and beans. any kind of greens that you so can you think of. Seeds available exactly. But if right. You want to plant tomatoes, I, I am going to show you how to plant it on planting day, right. and then at planting day, we'll see what we have. I can't tell you what we're going to have yet. Okay. Um, so on planting day, I will show you how to plant it. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you when to put it in, and then we'll go from there. But will there be plants available, or should we bring our own plants? It, I, I don't know yet. Again, it's based on what you write on your sheet okay. tonight. Yeah. Or so the future. tell us what you want. Right. right. What is your wish list for... <laughs> cool season plants to begin with. Uh -huh. right. I just learned that tonight. How as good is that? I'm teachable. Yeah. <laughs> so cool season plants, so that's something we'll coordinate and have for you. Put your wish list together, but don't ask for the moon because we don't have the room. Um, once everything is tallied, could we put that on the web page? Yeah. Once, yeah. once we get an idea of, of how it's going to go and what will be provided on plants today, we'll put it on the website okay. so that You'll, you'll be prepared, and certainly if, if you're not using email, you can give, give Ginny a call. Ginny will know what's going on, um, so you know. Um, if you prefer that you've been doing this for years and you know what you want to plant, you want to go out and get it, you have a, a favorite garden center or a nursery person, um, then, then go out and do it. What I will suggest, and um, I say this with good reason, I do not endorse buying plants at big box stores. I will say that right now, uh, they were a large source of tomato blight in 2009. Big box stores. I won't mention any names. I think you kind of know. Oh, okay. I, would, I would fully encourage that you use local garden centers and nurserymen. They know their stock. They stand behind their stock. If there's a problem with it, they can track it back to who grew it go to a big box store, it's going to be in South Carolina somewhere where we don't know what's going on as far as disease. Mm -hmm. what, can I ask, which, uh, can you tell us which organic forms are working yet, that maybe we can go there and buy our produce? Um, <laughs> um, I think that's something that you're going to teach us, right? Yes. Well, yes. Yeah. But I, no, I mean, for what we can't grow ourselves, or what we don't want to grow ourselves, yep. just to know where organic, where organic farms are. It's very hard to find organic farms. Yeah. It's very hard. I actually, I actually work at two. I work at one in Suffield, and I work at one in Lebanon. Ooh. So, um, so the one in Suffield is? Okay. Is Oxen Hill. Where is Oxen Hill? Oxen Hill Farm Where in Suffield. Oxen Yep. Um, I, think that, I think that Kitchen Garden is also up in South Hadley or something. Hadley there. Yeah, check, check the area. Uh, Meadowview Farm has always been a favorite of ours. That's how we started uh, the garden in 2008, 2009. We were very happy with those plants there. Meadowview? Uh, Meadowview is in Southwick, Mass., just over the border. Okay. Yep, um, good quality. But do some research. Yeah. Do some research. Um, you don't necessarily have to have um, an organic plant. If you know the grower and you know the practices, um, it's very expensive to be organic. There's a whole lot of licensing that goes on. And if you can talk to the growers and say they may not be um, certified organic, but they follow organic practices, mm -hmm. so that's why, again, going local. I'm a big advocate of supporting local farmers and local merchants. So okay. talk to your local farmers and ask them, ask them the questions. Right. And well, I go to the Springfield Farmer's Market, and there's one of the booths there. Is in this one is in Hadley's. It's um, Kitchen Garden, and I think Sarah Redfire Farms. Oh, okay, is yes. Also, I'm yep. sure you're from, I, yep. The name is so cool. Yep. Um, but I think they're organic. Yes, they are. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. They have a big brand. They do? Springfield. Yep. And you know, it's not very far from Enfield. It's just a hot skip to jump, and it's, and it's great on Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Oh, I know. What, I have a, qu that's a quick question about 
um, trash to go into the, uh, if you put the trash, what about the little containers, the little plastic containers for the plants and things that you, if we bring any, bring any, or even any of the plants, what, the little plastic containers that they've been grown in, are those okay to put in the, into there, or should we, should it just be compost? Is there a compost in a trash? There, is that something you're going to go over on planting? Yes. Yeah, but what, it, what I would suggest is some of the garden centers are now learning how to recycle those. So as you're speaking to your oh, garden okay. centers, ask them, what do I do with the container? Best, best question for them. Yep. And then let me know if they're recycling. That would be awesome. Because okay. um, some of them don't have plastic, too. Some of them are the, yeah, like the there's a pots, new right, kind right, of different right. kind yeah. of pots. pots and yes. cow pots cow and pots. stuff like that. Cow pots. Oh, cow pots. Cow pots. That's something new. Made out of <laughs> cow patties. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But they're I, sterilized. I pulled, yeah. I pulled my rental agreement off, but because I thought this is rules for us to keep, but mm -hmm. what you want to know about is on that. Right, and we've got extra copies. We've got extra copies for you to take as a master sheet today. So if there's anything that you want to take with you that you need to pass in, we can have a copy to we go need back to, pass to you. In the entire thing. Yeah. Right, we need to have you fill out. So. Um, I think this is a great segue. So those that are um, having a, a bed, if you could please fill out, list what you would like to grow and eat. So this is kind of like we're talking about our cool season. And if you do know your warm season, list that too, because you want to know that. And then fill out, print clearly please, if you could, make sure we don't have, um, we understand the emails um, right here. And then um, for you to um, agree to the waiver um, also. So that's what all needs tonight and the $25. Um, and you are on your way and we'll be um, communicating and we'll also have planting day. What about kale? Can you plant this? Yes. 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 Kale, kale is a cool summer. season. Kale is a cool season. You okay. plant it in the cool weather and you harvest it in the cool weather. So that would be a plant or um, a transplant that we would put in in July so that you can eat during the wintertime. Yes. Yep. So you indicated lettuce, radishes, I took notes, beets, kale um, for a cool season. Yes. Okay. Any type of green, lettuces, spinach, arugula, mustard greens. Peas, uh, the warm season again are tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, beans. They need warm soil. It's not the warm temperature. So when we have these extreme fluctuations, and yes, we will have them this year, 71 day, 40 the next. Expect it. Um, you want to make sure that the soil is warm for the plants. Yes, the raised beds do warm um, up more quickly than uh, land, um, but they also dry out quicker. So we'll go over that on planting day. Um, so. so again, some of the warm you mentioned was cucumber, beans, squash, eggplant. I like eggplant. Mm. Um, peppers and tomatoes. Yes. Okay. All right. So um, why don't we, um, you fill out your information and um, any more questions? Did I miss any? We're going to have more, though, right? We're going to have more on planting day and more throughout the season, so we'll continue that. And so I think we're ready. If you are ready, we will start. Um, Ginny is all ready for you. And to please um, continue enjoying the strawberries. And we're also going to do the raffle. So, yep, she's right here. So, Ginny, if you want to, do you want to go around to, to each one? Has everyone, did everybody um, fill in a raffle? So if you have not had the chance, yeah, if you have not had the opportunity, please come on up and uh, put your name and your um, telephone number, your email there. Yes. Grab a napkin. There you go. <laughs> you have a bed. So are we turning in this whole thing? Because we've written down. Yes. Oh, but I'm only turning in a few pages. Is that all right? I want my choices on it. 
Let me see. How are you doing here? I'm good. I just, I just, that's this. Yeah, you're good there. Right, and I signed the back. Okay, and you're the, good there. That's, I don't need, you don't need to help. And your do you? waiver. Oh, you're, you're ahead of, you're, you're all set. You're all set. How are you doing? You have any questions? No. Mm -mm. Nice to meet you. Thank you. I'm Jamie Burnside. Hi, nice Jamie. To nice to meet you. I'll see you in the garden. I should have gone around and had everybody introduce themselves. That's all right. But, um.